Ignatius of Antioch. Ignatius, also called Theophorus, was born in Syria uh, around the year 50 AD and died in Rome between 98 to 107 AD. As such, Ignatius is one of the earliest church fathers that we are considering in this video series. Because of time, uh, because of the time of his life, uh, much authority is assigned to him because of the assumption that he personally knew the apostles or the disciples of Jesus Christ. In fact, Ignatius was second only to Theodoret as being the bishop of Antioch. The Apostle Peter being the first bishop of Antioch. And so he lives very close to the apostles themselves. Now, Ignatius is the first writer to stress the virgin birth of Jesus. He firmly denounced uh, docetism and viewed the mystery of the Trinity as an assumed doctrine of the faith. The only guarantee against heresy he taught is the church was united under a bishop. Uh, it is Ignatius that is one of the first to begin to use the title bishop. The key to understanding the, ecclesiology, the ecclesiology of uh, Ignatius is the presuppositions of salvation, as will be indicated in the church as the body of Christ also exists. Uh, thus, his ecclesiology uh, is without at least a general examination of soteriology, which would be incomprehensible. In the extant writings of Ignatius, one cannot find any systematic exposition of soteriology. This is quite natural, since he is writing to Christians who are primarily internal. Uh, he is not concerned necessarily with Christians outside of the church. And he's also anticipating his own impending martyrdom. Ignatius longed to shed his blood for Christ, but the opportunity to do so was not granted to him until the persecution under Domitian. While the short reign of Nerva lasted in the church, and the church was in peace, but under Trajan, persecution broke out anew. In the year 107, the emperor came to Antioch. Ignatius was seized and brought before him, having witnessed, having confessed Christ. He was condemned to be taken to chains in Rome. There, he was exposed to wild beasts, and during his last journey, he was welcomed by the faithful of Smyrna, Troas, and other places along the way. Now, Ignatius took the opportunity to encourage them, speaking to groups of Christians at every town along the way. When the prison escort reached the west coast of Asia Minor, it halted before taking him aboard ship so that delegations and several people could greet him. Uh, he would speak to them at length and they would provide him gifts for his journey. Uh, he bid farewell to Christians and he commended them to the grace of God. Now, he arrived in Rome just as the public spectacle in the amphitheater was drawing to a close. The faithful of the city came out to meet him. He was at once hurried to the amphitheater where two fierce lions immediately devoured him. He ended his saintly life by a glorious death, exclaiming, May I become agreeable, bread to the Lord. His remains were carried to Antioch where they were interred in the reign of Theodosius. They were transferred to the church within the city. At present, they are venerated in Rome. Ignatius wrote seven letters that have been preserved, five to congregations that had greeted him in mass or by um, delegation in Ephesus, Magnesia, the Trillians, and the Philadelphians, and the Smyrnians, one to the congregation that would greet him at his destination in Rome, and of course, that famous letter to Paul Carp, Bishop of Smyrna, and disciple of John. His letters are available in several modern translations. Perhaps the most accessible is the Penguin paperback early Christian writings translated by Maxwell Staniforth. The themes with which he is chiefly concerned is number one, the importance of maintaining Christian unity in love and in sound doctrine against factionalism and against the heresy of docetism, the belief that Christ was not fully human and did not have a material body, that's docetism, or really die and suffer. Number two, the role of the clergy as a focus of Christian unity. And of course, number three, Christian martyrdom as a glorious privilege eagerly to be grasped. Listen.